Hello everybody. So today in this tutorial I'm gonna show you guys how to use ZFS. So use the ZFS command in Solaris 11. So I will show you, I will explain a little bit when to use ZFS and then I will proceed to to, to show you how to, to use these its commands and how to create the ZFS uh, file system or data set and then how to use snapshots clo and clones. So uh, this is my system. I'm using uh, Solaris 11.3 so you guys basically would like to use ZFS whenever you have you would like to have the duplication uh, or you would like to have snapshots or compression included in your uh, in your ZFS in your system so you don't actually need to, to install extra packages for that and you can whenever you'd like to have a like uh, disk drives that have more than two terabytes for example or so basically ZFS accepts a, a big big very big or almost unlimited size of uh, data s uh, file systems okay so basically with ZFS you have um, this command uh, ZFS create to create a file system so let's check uh, before wha what data sets we we have so we can proceed by df minus h h to say human readable so as you can guys see, um, I have these data uh, sets, but actually I can't I can't see everything because uh, because I'm not root. So I would uh, proceed by sudo sudo. Okay, so if I do df minus h, I would have all my data sets. Um, so here, as you can see, we have available uh, size 232 gigs used size 650 megabits so if I want for example to create a new file system I would do ZFS create um, let's say here is our zip uh, our zpool into the pool call, uh, which is called zpool in uh, Solaris so I would do airpool slash export slash home slash oracle slash let's say new file system okay now if I do uh, again df minus h I can see my new file system here okay so it's using 1% of the total capacity I can also show my file systems by by typing zfs list then my uh, zfs list well this is basically gonna show me every every single uh, file system ZFS file system so I should have I should have it here yes okay so I would like for example to um, to see the ZFS parameters so we have a lot of parameters defining our ZFS file system so to do this I can use ZFS get and then specify what what kind of parameters I would like to get let's say for example all at the beginning and then uh, we select our pool and then our file system so um, export how uh, Oracle and uh, new FS okay so uh, you have a bunch of parameters actually so you have access time um, check some for integrity you have compression so as I said you like this the ZFS file system can uh, can actually support compression without without extra packages. So this is actually the algorithm. You can like set it to set it with like a, a compression algorithm. This compression ratio is like a read read only parameter. So whenever you change this, you can have other than uh, one one time. So you'd probably get something uh, like like two two point five depends on the your compression algorithm and your content so you have the dub for the duplication encryption as well um, here's um, a very important parameter so it's here uh, it's set per default none but you actually can can change that so let's for example make a quota for this so ZFS um, set quota equals let's say um, let's say 10 gigs for this file system I just copy it and paste it uh, it's faster 
Okay, cool. So now I would like to get that value. ZFS get, but just coda. Actually, if I, I would like to have like uh, some parameters, not all of them, I can like separate them with uh, commas. Here, I just would like to, to show the coda for this file system. So again, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Yeah, so we have our new value here, 10 gigs, so you basically can't, uh, can't exceed this value which is the principle of quotas. So when you when you set quotas for a file system, users using the, the, that uh, file system can't actually exceed that quota. Okay, so uh, I didn't mention something, which is like traditionally we used to, in Unix systems, and even in Solaris 10, I mean before ZFS, you, you actually had to create the file system, I mean make the partition, then create the file system, and then create the directory of that file system and then mount that file system in that directory actually with zfs create you actually you directly straight have that file system mounted on the file system with that same name i mean of course you can change that and you have actually one parameter which is called mount point where uh, yep it's here so you have mount point it's in export home oracle new fs so of course i can change this okay so i would like to access that um, file system so cd export home oracle and no file system i will create a file for, uh, let's say echo mm, i and new file okay so cat new file and i have hi so uh let's let's for example create a snapshot of uh, this file system, a snapshot is like it's like a copy of that file system, but um, it just links. So whenever you make a snapshot of a file system, you you won't basically have uh, the same size of that file system. Actually, in the beginning, you have like uh, a very very small size since it's links. And then, um, as long as you as long as you add files to that uh, to the original data set. Actually, the the snapshot is gonna be the difference be between the data set at that point where when when you created the the snapshot and the at the certain point you are using your your ZFS file system. So actually, it's data. It's just the difference. Well, so if I would like to to make the snapshot, I can use ZFS snap or snapshot, whatever. It both work. Um, so and then R pool export home oracle new file uh, new, new fs yep at um, let's say tuesday okay now i would like to list my all my snapshots so zfs list my minus t snap or snapshot both work and it is here so i basically have zero used of course if, if i'd like to change it a little bit i'm gonna have some some change let's say i'd like to to do echo um hi everybody let's say everybody and um i will add it to new file okay so get new file hi everybody cool so I would like to execute again uh, ZFS list minus T. It has changed to be the difference. So actually, we have it uh, 19 Ks. So I would like to go back to that um, to to that snapshot. Here's the snapshot, and okay, this works. So I would like to sh to to see what my file cont file contains. So uh, no file. And I have again high, so it worked. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to to destroy your data set. So ZFS destroy uh, this this file system. Okay, so here's there is an error. File system has children. Okay, so this is normal because you can't destroy a file system when whenever it has a child. So a child could be um, a snapshot or a clone. So I basically, whether I, I go and destroy the whole snapshot or I can just use an option like minus 
destroy minus r for recursivity and it's gonna destroy all the children okay so another error cannot amount okay bec actually because I am within this uh, within the the file system so I should should go back in the error key so now I should be able to destroy it yes so ZFS um, list and I have this one but I don't have the file system under it so thank you very much for watching and have a nice evening bye